Gyroflow is a free video stabilization software that helps you stabilize the footage of your flights using gyro data. You can use it to stabilize basically video coming from any camera as long as you have some gyro data available. Now in the past it has been rather difficult to use, um, but now with the version 1.0 they release it's gotten much easier. And I've seen many videos out there that show you how you can stabilize, I don't know, Runcam Orange uh, video footage that usually wasn't able to be stabilized before because uh, yeah, it doesn't have its own stabilization that works well. Um, however, I have not seen videos uh, showing how you can stabilize the videos coming from the DJI FPV system, either recorded through the goggles or through the air unit. And this I want to change today. I want to walk you through what you have to do to set this up and then we're going to compare before and after stabilization to see if it actually makes any sense or not. My name is Nick and this is how I fly. Now the drone that we're going to use for this test um, is my 2-inch Y6 drone, the Reliant Mini. There's going to be a video coming out uh, soon about it where you can check it out in with more detail. And it uses the um, Cadex Vista um, with the original DJI FPV camera. Now, this camera does not have a gyro in it, obviously. Um, so what we're going to have to do is find another source of uh, gyro data. And actually, this is the flight controller because many flight controllers now have an onboard flash that saves black box information and this is exactly what we need because in this black box data we just have to store the right information that we need to later stabilize the video which is the gyro data um, the problem is that these flight controllers only have a very small flash chip that is yeah mainly supposed to be used for flying settings um, yeah test flights and everything um, however not for recording a full day of uh, your flights and um, yeah the flash chip has 4 8 or 16 megabytes usually of flash memory and that's just not enough uh, with this uh, drone here after I don't know five minutes of flight actually the the um, flash chip which is 8 megabytes on this board was filled up so that's not really a solution so what can we do now there are a few things how you can solve this and in my opinion there are two good options that actually work. Option one is that you reduce the amount of logging that Betaflight does um, in order to save space. And um, now what you can do is you can use different CLI commands to reduce this down. That is one solution. Um, however, now with uh, Betaflight 4.3 they have uh, introduced something called presets. And while originally this is mostly directed towards uh, pitch tuning stuff and, and, and flight performance and all of that, um, the good thing is that these presets can basically be used for any settings that there are. Um, and that includes black box settings. So what you can do, and let's hop over to, um, to the PC here. And um, here we are. Um, so what we have to do, and it's important that you um, have the most current um, beta flight configurator 10.8.0 installed. Um, and you have flashed um, a firmware that is 4.3 something. And then you will see this presets tab here. And when you go to these presets, um, you see that there are a ton of them available and you have different options how to filter them. However, what we're going to be looking for is gyro flow. So if we search for gyro flow here, you see that there is a preset called gyro flow minimum settings um, by the user Garban. And when we click on it, we see that what it does, it, it disables all black box fields which are not necessary to use. Um, and this means you will have the lowest logging rate possible and therefore you will be able to store much more data on this chip. Just have to click pick and then it's uh, installed and you can use it. Now while this was more of a software solution, uh, the second solution is actually hardware based and what it does is that it actually uses um, a device which is well basically just an SD card uh, with a little board around it um, as lightweight as it could 
B. Um, and you can connect this to a free UART. Um, so you have to have a free UART. So I guess you should have to have either an F405 or an F7 board. Um, so you have enough UARTs with an F411 board. Uh, this can be an issue, especially if you want to use DJI FPV as I do. And as in, yeah, if you watch this video, probably are as well. Um, but this thing here is called Open Lager. It is an, an open source design um, that has been adapted by a few manufacturers. This one is um, from J. Hamsu, whatever they are pronounced. Um, and yeah, what you do is you connect this to a free UART um, and then change the uh, beta flight settings that it's um, logging on a serial device. And then you can just store anything on here. Um, if you put in a large enough SD card, you know, you don't really have to worry about what, what data you're storing because it's just going to be enough. I mean, I don't think you can find a 64-bit uh, um, micro SD card these days. Uh, so you probably have one or two gigabytes. And even with the normal logging that you do with, with beta flight, with just everything, um, it's going to be fine. Um, yeah, this thing costs, I don't know, 15 bucks, 10 to 15 bucks or so. Um, it's an additional investment. If you can get by with the, the beta flight uh, software solution, then that's fine as well, of course. Um, although I found that it's just, um, it's a better solution. Also, you have, you, you can save all your, um, uh, the, the gyro scale data that you need for, um, you know, uh, getting the right pits tuned out and, and all of that. So I think, I think this is a good investment to do. All right, now we know that um, Betaflight is going to record the gyro data that we need um, one way or the other. Um, we have the camera set up, so what we need to do now is just head out and do a little test flight. Um, and that's what we're going to do right now. It's not going to be something exciting. I'll just head out for the nearest um, park and then, you know, just fly a few rounds and then get back. And then we're going to see um, how we can process that data. Process? Hmm, whatever. All right, let's head out and fly. <laughs> We are now back from the field and now it's time to head over to Gyroflow. This is the classic Gyroflow interface, nothing, uh, uh, yeah, I, I did not do any changes here. Um, and I have my um, goggle recording, uh, this MP4 file, and I have the black box lock here, and that is all that we need. Now we just drag and drop the MP4 file into the video information. Now it's loaded. It tells me that the lens profile is not loaded. We will care about that in a second, but let's also import the black box lock down here in motion data. And that's done as well. So importing is all done now. Now we need to select the lens profile and now it depends on what device you record it with. If you um, record with the DJI Air unit, then you can set it here. If you record it like I did with a Cadex Vista, I can now select the profile that I'm using. Um, in my case, I am flying 4.3 um, because I find I can see more. Um, and also for Dyroflow, I read that it is actually better because um, you have more um, yeah, picture information in both axes. So if it's 16.9, um, it's basically cut here, and then you have less in the um, in the vertical axis. But then again, I don't know. I didn't see much of a difference. I don't think it matters. So whatever you record with, you need to select the right um, aspect ratio here. So for me, it is 4.3. So let's click on that, and that's it. Now. I need to do one more thing um, because in my case, um, I usually fly with an uh, angle of 20 degrees for the FPV camera. And that is something that is important for um, Gyroflow to know as well. So I go to rotation and I say pitch is going to be 20%. Um, and I saw in a video that it, it that said it's always better to use a low pass filter here of 50 hertz and I didn't see any difference. Um, so, you know, do it or don't do it. I don't think it's going to hurt, so I'm going to do it. Um, and the next thing you need to do is you need to tell Gyroflow about the syncing because usually um, when you have a camera that is disconnected from the rest of your quad, um, then you need to tell how far off the... Um, the start of the video is, but in our case, it's much easier because um, 
all DJI systems that I know start recording when you arm the quad and that's also when the black box recording starts. So that's fine, we don't need to set anything here, just click on auto sync. And then it takes a little time, but it's super fast. And then it did the syncing. Um, you can do check it in detail if you want, but I never felt the need for doing so because it always uh, was working out very fine with DJI because everything is already uh, synced up perfectly well. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Now the video is stabilized. Now we can export it and then check out the differences. That That's all there is to it. It's really super easy. And then it's a free software. I'm, I'm, I'm super amazed by it. Anyway, I will now export the video and then let's uh, look at them side by side and uh, see if we feel like it's doing a good job or not. So now we have both of the recordings together. Left is stabilized, right is unstabilized. Although I don't think I need to say that because the difference is just so obvious. Um, and now I, I was super amazed the first time that I did it and actually couldn't believe that it was so easy to do um, because the the footage is just it's, it's just so much um, smoother and, and nicer and and better in every way. Um, of course, it's still um, a rather low quality recording compared to to the GoPro or, or similar, um, but you know, for, for a quad where you just have that available, I think you can really improve the footage by a lot that you have. And, um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's really amazing to me. Um, and we can switch over and see in, in detail a bit more what it looked like before the stabilization. And, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this, with this drone. Uh, it flies very stable already and there aren't many jitters or anything. So that's a good thing. Um, but even though, um, if we look at the stabilized part again, it's, it's just, it's very different. It's just better in every way. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that, that's basically all I can say. It's, and, and let the, that the images speak for themselves. Um, and I think it's just, it's just really awesome what they did here. All right. That's it. That's the comparison. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a comparison of stabilized DJI FPV footage versus Runcan Thump stabilized footage to see if we can get any quality improvements by using a Runcam Thump because the Runcam Thump is, I already just printed out a mount for it. The Runcam Thump is a, if it's decased, um, less than five grams of weight. So that's uh, something that you can easily just uh, throw onto here as well and see the results. Um, and I'm excited to see if the run cam thump is better than the, the Cadex Vista, at least goggle recording or not. Um, and we are going to find that out in the, in the next video. If you're interested in that, then stay tuned, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, you know the drill, and I'll see you next time. Thanks and bye-bye.